Okay, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to explain this chart on comparative religion. We're going to compare the New Testament to um, Buddhism's works, the Quran of Islam, Judaism, the Old Testament that is, and Hinduism. But I want to start off by telling you that if you look at the lower left-hand corner of, your, of the video, um, you'll see two double lines. Um, and those are also on the YouTube interface on the screen not on the video if you click on the double lines you can pause the video and stop and look at it yourself without hearing me and then to start it up again after you've clicked the two double lines you'll you'll see a triangle a gray triangle you click on that and the video will start again <clears throat> having said that let's begin um, first, we have the author, which are the authors of the New Testament, which are various people. Then we have Buddha and his writings, Islam and the Quran by Muhammad, Judaism, which is dozens of different uh, writings, and Hinduism, which it is unknown who the writings are. So we're going to start off with the date written then the earliest copy um let me explain that a little the date that it was written when it was first written such as the new testament it was first written uh anywhere between 50 and 100 a.d that's when they wrote the new testament but like most ancient writings the material they used was not um it didn't last. It was uh, made out of reeds that they found in the Nile River. They made paper out of them, but they didn't last just like leaves today would not last if you wrote on them. It wasn't until later, till they started writing on pottery, animal skins, and bones, that these things lasted. Which is why in the New Testament, the first, the original Bible was written somewhere between 50 and 100 AD, the, the different books of the original Bible. Now, we don't have that original Bible, but we have copies of it. And the earliest copies we have are 130 AD. So the time span between the original and the copies is less than 100 years. This is important because any story that you tell, the length of time between when you originally tell it and then it goes down the line and eventually gets to a person um, sometime later, a lot of the details change, so it's important to have a uh, small amount of time between the date the original copy was written and the time and the earliest copy that you have. So, with the New Testament, the time span is less than a hundred years, and of course, the number of copies we have: fifty-six hundred, five thousand six hundred manuscripts of the New Testament. A manuscript is not a original copy or a full copy for that matter, but rather ranges from um, fragmentary pieces of paper with um, various texts on them to full books of the New Testament, such as say, um, maybe it, it would include the entire book of Luke or the entire book of Romans or the book of Revelations, but not the entire New Testament, not all the books. So in that range between fragments of writings and sets of books, but not the complete copy, we have over 5,600 copies of that. Um, in the, by the third century, we have 26,000 copies of the New Testament. 26,000 by the third that dated from the third century and the accuracy of the copies is 95.5 percent the reason they can tell this is when they find the earliest copies some they're now saying the early copies are written even before before 100 AD they compare them to the current Bible the current copy that we have now and there are only 0.5% difference. But let me explain that because um, it's uh, it's misleading. 
because what would happen a lot of times is if you had a copy of the Bible and let's say a church used that copy to make 3,000 more copies but there was a period left out at the end of the sentence. That period would count as an error. But it wouldn't count as just one error. It would count as 3,000 errors because they copied that Bible with the missing period 3,000 times. So the accuracy of the copies is only small grammatical errors, maybe misspellings of words or words spelled differently, like Jesus Christ as opposed to uh, Christ Jesus, maybe they did the two words reversed. Um, that's what makes up the other 0.5% of discrepancies in the Bible. The Bible is extremely reliable, more so than any other book in, of antiquity, whether it be religious or not. Buddha. We have um, I'm going to jump ahead here. We have the earliest Buddhist writings we have were written in the first century AD. They're called the Gandharian texts. And they're 80 fragments of writing. They're 80 pieces or shreds of paper with writings on them, Buddhist writings on them. We don't know when the original Buddhist writings were written. Um, will go by the death of Buddha, which was 400 years before Christ. And the earliest copy of these 80 fragments, the Gandharian texts, is written in the first century. So let's say that they're, they're for, the time span between the original and that is, um, I'm sorry, Buddha was 600 years before Christ. So it's 600 years is the time span between the original 80 copies of the Gandharian text and um, 600 years between the earliest um, the date it was written, originally written, and the 80 copies of Gandharian texts that we have. In about 200 AD, there are more Buddhist writings that are more accurate. Um, the accuracy of the copies of the Gandharian texts, the 80 copies of the Gandharian texts that we have, from the first century is extremely questionable because the the paper it was written on or whatever it was written on um, the fragments are so deteriorated that a lot of times they had to guess at what they said it was very difficult to determine finally we have Islam there's, there's a story behind Islam Islam is probably the most corrupt of all the books in um, religious history and the reason being is that Muhammad, who was the one who spoke the utterances that he received from from his God, Allah, died in 632 AD. He could neither read nor write, and so we have his writings, the Quran, written by his followers. The earliest copies we have are from 652 AD, which is 20 or less years than the original copies, which sounds impressive, but it's not. We only have two copies, and there's a reason for that. There was a man named Uthman, who during a war, an Islamic war that broke out around 650, demanded that all Quran copies of the Quran be brought to him for preservation. Instead, what he did was he went through them, and any that didn't agree with his with his personal political aspirations or his personal uh, opinions, he burned. He burned hundreds of Qurans. And we know that they didn't agree with the current ones and that all Qurans don't agree because in the 70s we found what are called the Yemeni texts, which were texts under a Buddhist monastery in Yemen. And um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry, not Buddhist, Islamic monastery in Yemen. And um, these texts all varied from the copies we have now of Islam. Um, so clearly there is some uh, tomfoolery going on there with the Islamic holy books. So we don't know the copy, we don't know the accuracy of the copies. 
Finally, we have Judaism, which um, started at the, at, um, the first writings were probably 1500 BC through 500 BC. Um, the reason that there's such a great discrepancy is because there's many books in in Judaism. There's dozens of different books, and they were written all different times. They were written throughout that time period. So the earliest copy that we have is 150 BC. The time span between the original copy, 150 BC, and the original is unknown because there's so many different books in Judaism that we don't know. It's impossible to say when which one was written exactly and when which when the earliest texts and matched up with the earliest texts we have exactly. The number of copies that we have from 150 BC is only 10. And the accuracy of the copies is unknown. Finally, we come to the last religion, which is Hinduism. And the date there biblical, not biblical, but uh, religious works were written was 5000 BC. The earliest copy we have is unknown. So the time span between the earliest copy and the original is unknown, and the number of copies is unknown, and the accuracy of the copies is unknown. The one thing I can tell you about it being accurate historically is Buddhism has 80 million gods. Now that's hard to believe, but you can understand it in this t in this text. Um, each individual village or town was allowed to make up, is allowed to make up any number of gods they want. A god for their personal, for their, their bay that they, they live next to, their body of water they live next to, the fishing in that body of water they live next to, the particular fish they live next to, or they could turn a person into a god if they want. And so they ended up with now where they have 80 million gods um and that's it you can if you want to read a little bit more about this kind of thing just punch into google or youtube comparative religions and you'll find more all right thanks for listening bye bye